Hello, freshmen. So we are in the research paper unit, and um, I'm reminding you of one of the things that we're going over in class, which is how to use Google Docs to help you with your research paper citations. Um, I have tested it out, and it seems to work great as long as you know what you're looking for. So this is what we're going to be using to help us with our citations in our paper. Now remember, you need to cite anything that is not considered common knowledge. And remember, common knowledge is something that um, most people would know without researching the topic. Okay. So you want to insert information about that, whether you quote it directly from the website, whether you paraphrase it, which means putting it in your own words, but about the same length as what you see on the website or whether you summarize it. As long as it's information that most people don't know, you need to cite it within your paper. So here's the paper that I showed you in class. And as you can see, I've started working on it, and I've got a number of different facts that I've already cited within the source. But I wanna show you how to do this using um, Google Citations. So when you put in a fact, here's the fact that I've highlighted, only female, female mummies, excuse me, only female mummies have been found um, having been marked by them. So we've only been able to find tattoos on female mummies, interestingly enough, from ancient Egypt. So I found that information on this website, uh, Smithsonian Magazine, great source. Uh, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. is well known as being the curator for our history as a culture as well as global history. And this is their online magazine. So this article, Tattoos the Ancient and Mysterious History, is one that I'm able to find a lot of information about um, ancient tattoos. So because this is a great source for me and I've already found one piece of information that says um, only female tattoos. Let's see. Um, only females were women. Only female mummies found with tattoos were usually dismissed by the male excavators and seemed to assume women were of dubious status. So exclusively a female practice in ancient Egypt. And that's what I'm pulling into what I'm about to show you. So I am, I have just on my draft summarized it. Only female mummies have been found having been marked by them. That's awkward wording. And I'll change that when I get the opportunity. But for right now, I want to cite that. So I have my website up where I found the information and up here in tools, I click on that and I go down to where it says citations. Now the benefit of this Google citation app is that not only does it help you with the internal citations for your paper, but it also helps you keep track of um, site, websites that you've used within the paper to use for your work cited page or bibliography, which, make, which will make it a lot less work when we get to that step in the paper. So, we're going to go over here. We are adding citation source. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose what kind of source it is. Now, this is a magazine website, which would typically be considered maybe a newspaper article, um, but I'm going to use it as a website um, because the S Smithsonian Magazine, I think, is only an online magazine and it doesn't give me the option for an online magazine. So I'm going to go over here. It's not a newspaper, so it's a website. So I've accessed it by the website. So here we are. We're starting with an author. So I go back into my source, and I'm searching for an author. Now, the author's name is typically underneath the title of the article. Here's we got the article title, and here's the author. Now, I want to let you know that it is better for you to find sources that have authors actually marked. Um, as who actually wrote the piece um, because it, it helps you with the steps of your paper. So if you can find, like if you look at this website and you can't find an author's name, it's a good idea for you to see if you can find that information on a different website with an author um, because that also increases the credibility of the website if an author's name is given. So I have Kate Linneberry. So I'm actually going to, I can either 
remember that. Or you can just go in and copy it. Go back here, first name, Kate. Last name, Lena Berry. I'm gonna double check the spelling on that before I, nope, Lineberry, no double Ns. Or I could have just copied and pasted it in. Now, if you look at the article and underneath it, it has the name, not of a person, but of a corporation, like it might say Time Life Editors or something like that. In which case, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna click Corporate Organization and then you're gonna put Time Life Editors. Okay, but we had an author, so we're gonna unclick that corporate and then there's our author's name right there. If there is another person, more than one, who is listed as the author, then you're gonna add contributor and you're gonna have that person's last name and first name. But since there's only one, we just have that one person. Okay, so title refers to title of the article, not title of the website. So we're going to come back here, and it is Tattoos, the Ancient and Mysterious History. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to highlight, copy, control C. I'm going to come back to my rough draft, and I'm going to control V and insert that in there. Okay, got that done. Back to my website. Now I need to find the website title. Website title, usually right up here at the top of the page, and you'll see it says Smithsonian Magazine. I can copy that, but it's I can remember that. So I'm going to come down here and write Smithsonian Magazine. Then I'm looking for a publisher. So publishers are... So like for Smithsonian, Smithsonian Magazine, it's probably going to be the Smithsonian, but we're going to come down here and we're just going to take a look. We'll find publisher and sometimes copyright information way down at the bottom of the website. So you can see down here that there's a bunch of different stuff, and you'll see that right here there's things listed. The first thing listed is Smithsonian Institution. And if you like, look down here, Smithsonian Institution is the last thing listed right down here on the copyright. So I'm going to use Smithsonian Institution as my publisher. Okay, Smithsonian Institution. Now it needs the URL. That's super simple. Just going to go up here, copy it, control C. Bring it over here, control V, and I'm going to paste it in there. Publish day back here at the top of the article, usually listed right by the author's name. You will find the date. So this was published January 1st of 2007. Come back here. So I need day. That was one month, January, and I'm writing it out, not putting numbers year 2007. Access day, that's the day that you first accessed it or that you're writing your paper. So for me today, it's 29 September. I'm recording this in advance. So I have 29 for the day, month, September, year 2020. Okay, you don't need a short title, leave that blank. So we're going to do add citation source. Got it. It's giving me a reminder of something I already know. So add citation source. Now I have the source in here. And I'm going to the end right before my period. At the end of my sentence, I'm going to put in my cursor. Before the period, I put in my cursor right after the last word in that sentence. I'm going to put a space. And then I'm going to come back over here, and I want to cite this in my paper. So I'm just going to press this magic cite button, and boom, the citation, the correct citation that I need for the paper has been inserted into the paper for me. All right, look how wonderful that was. Now, that was a lot of steps, but those steps are going to help you in the long run. Even if you close this out, you are not going to lose that citation as long as you have this paper open. You just have to go back to tools, go down to citations, 
and that sidebar is going to open up again and that source will always be there. So if you insert another fact from the Smithsonian article and you're done with it, all you have to do is at the end of it, remember space after your last word and before your period, put in your citation and it'll put it in there for you just the way you want it to be in there. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the beautiful thing when you're done with this. So when you're done with your whole paper, don't do it now, but when you're done with your whole paper and we're working on our last page, I'm going to insert a page break. The beautiful thing of this is you're going to have all these citations that you've used in your paper listed here. You are going to in, press this button, insert bibliography, and look what just happened. My work cited page was done for me. Not only that, but with multiple citations over here, it's going to arrange them in alphabetical order for me already. So one of the things that I'm going to want to do with this, and I'll remind this to you when the time comes, is I want to change this from bibliography to work cited. Okay? Because that's the correct MLA format. But look at that. It's beautiful, right? And it takes a little bit of work to get all the information from the website there. But once you've got it there, you just have to press that cite when it's time to cite something from that source. And at the very end of your paper, it will create that works cited page for you in the exact format that you want it created. Beautiful, right? Okay. Um, you can come back and watch this video anytime you need to to remind you how to insert internal citations. Um, or if you want to ask me, I, you can ask me, but I'd rather have you watch the video and learn it for yourself. All right. Take care. And I hope this helped you out and makes you feel better about inter inserting internal citations in your paper.